Well, we're we're still screwing around at the Denver Narrow Gauge Convention. Sure who who would have thunk it could have gone on this there long? Were people that thought we never left and went home from the first round. Out it's going to be the next Narrow Gauge Convention before we're done. You guys just... still here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Indeed. Well, but we're having a lot of fun. This was an incredible narrow gauge convention, and we're actually nearing the end of the shows. Yes. This week, we are going up to Como oh. because there's a group of people who are sort of reconstructing the Como roundhouse oh. and train station and hotel, and really? they've gotten themselves a steam locomotive and laid a bunch of track and, and more and more and more going on all the time. And uh, holy cow, it's just really looking neat and uh, turning into quite an operation. Yes. So check this out, the Como Roundhouse. Well, we're picking up the tracks of the Denver South Park and Pacific here in Jefferson. Wow, that's a neat little depot. Isn't that thing gorgeous? And, oh. uh, what? The, is that like a 1920 model I tea? think. You know them better than me. <laughs> The railroad had taken its name from the fact that it climbed the Platte Canyon up to this huge grassy area called South Park. There were several little tiny villages here, Jefferson and Como both being among them. It was built in 1872, but later became part of the Colorado and Southern, a conglomeration of four different lines. Well, this really looks like a giant park. Isn't it? I can see why they call it South Park. No it's just kidding. It's like uh, the world's largest city park. It goes on and on. That's just beautiful. And look at the grade. The grade is just right there by the side of the road, totally untouched. Right. On the map here, we can see where the line originated in Denver, following the Platte River up the Platte Canyon into South Park on through several little towns to Jefferson and then to the heart of the system at Como. From there a line went over Boreas Pass to Breckenridge, Keystone and Leadville and the main line continued on through the Alpine Tunnel to Gunnison and ultimately Baldwin Station. Well, there's quite a bit going on here in Como, uh, by quite a bit. I mean, there's a lot left over from its glory days. A lot of little homes here, a school and a church. Just nifty, nifty stuff. Several old businesses, which really aren't in business anymore. Not really a ghost town, but not really a thriving city either. Now the cool stuff are the railroad buildings here. Here we can see the hotel on the left and the train station to the right. Passengers were picked up and dropped off in the street right in front of both the hotel and the train station. Looks like it was really quite a busy place and looks like the hotels here were doing quite a bit of business back in the day. Because of its central location on the line, Como really saw just about every train that moved come through or end or originate here. And the railroad station has been restored and it's looking really, really nice. They just completed the interior this year, still doing a few little odds and ends in here, but for the most part, the train station is finished. The offices and waiting rooms have really been dressed out so that they look like they're brand new. The freight areas have been left uh, a bit more rustic, which is actually really cool. I prefer it this way. Sort of like the look of the old wood. They're doing a lot of other work around here. This is an original plot plan of the area and they're going through and deciding which of these tracks they want to relay. But they have a lot of other things to get done first, including the restoration on the six stall stone roundhouse. As you can see, they've been doing quite a bit of work around here, but the building was in surprisingly good shape considering its age. It had been cared for to some extent, but it's really nice to see it all coming back to life. While it looks like the roof has been completely replaced, 
most of the support structure is still original. And that's really cool. I love to see the original stuff left when it's possible. The beautiful little stone roundhouse was built back in 1872, but they quickly outgrew it and 12 more stalls were added, this time just simple construction out of wood. As the railroad was taken over by the Colorado and Southern, they needed to add more and more facility here, and they had quite an extensive back shop and facilities for taking care of the locomotives. Look at this really cool wood coaling tower. Now there is one downside to wood, uh, it burns. And if you've got steam locomotives about, it's really likely to catch fire and burn. And so the 12 stalls all went up in flames and it was back to being a six stall. 191 here at the Colorado Railroad Museum is the only uh, surviving Denver South Park and Pacific engine that I'm aware of and they've got it on display at their roundhouse over there and we saw that a couple of weeks ago. There's some other restoration projects going on here at the roundhouse. I doubt that this passenger car will ever run again, but it's really neat to see what little bit of it is left. They do have some fairly complete rolling stock here that they're going to get running. This is not so complete. This is Caboose 1008, and they're going to try to get this running again, but there's not a lot of it left, is there? But when they get it done, it should look a lot like 1006 here. The CNS had these really neat little short cabooses with the cupola all the way down at one end. I'm pretty sure this is some kind of uh, steam tractor or uh, similar contrivance. The boiler is off of it. Reminds me a lot of a Frick steam engine, but I'm not quite sure what it is other than the fact that it's just really, really cool. They also had to get the turntable back up and running. Here's the turntable bridge and the pit had to be completely rebuilt and they've reinstalled the turntable bridge and they just barely got that done and it's all completely operational now. It's an Armstrong turntable, meaning you just grab a hold of it and turn it. There's no motor involved, but it actually turns very easily. And check this out, it's one of the old inspection pits from the wood part of the roundhouse that burned down. And here we see number four, their steam locomotive called Klondike Kate. They acquired this thing out of, well, you guessed it, the Klondike. This was up in Alaska on a three foot gauge railroad. After they bought it, they brought it here to this shop in Cheyenne, Wyoming. No, it's not the Union Pacific. This is Wasatch Rail Contractors, John Ramosh's shop, our old friend John Ramosh. And they rebuilt it for them and then transported it back to Como. And it's all running now. Wasatch normally rebuilds these smaller engines. These are Cagney amusement park engines. And that's sort of their stock and trade are these amusement park engines. But if it's a steam engine, they can rebuild it. And so they rebuilt Klondike Kate here for the guys in Como. They had the engine up and running for the 2017 narrow gauge convention and they had it operating one day. And so convention goers could come up to Como and see that. And then they put it away for the winter. You know, it'd really be neat to see a Colorado and Southern or, geez, a Denver South Park and Pacific locomotive running up here, but, well, there just aren't very many of those around, and, gee, they're all spoken for, so I doubt we'll ever see one up here, but, wow, wouldn't that be nice if that ever happened?
We owe thanks to John Maxwell for this incredible footage of the engine. We weren't able to get up there for the operating day. I'm putting a link in the movie's description as well as this one on screen right now and that will take you over to his channel. He's got a lot of really neat stuff over there and you do want to subscribe. So go on over there and take a look. There was so much going on at this convention. We just couldn't be everywhere at once. We really wanted to get up here for this operating day, but there was just no way to fit it in. Now, a train's not going to do you any good if you don't have some track to run it on, so they've been relaying track like crazy around here. I talked to them about what tracks they plan to relay, and they don't really seem to have a solid idea on that. They're just going to keep laying track until they get tired of laying track. It'd be really neat if they could get the entire yard relayed here. As of now, there's no plan to relay the main line, but, well, we can hope, can't we? They're trying to stay faithful to the early track using harp stands and stub switches, so that's really neat to see. This is the line that runs over to the hotel and the train station because the roundhouse is actually a few hundred feet away from there. And they've put in a road crossing. The restoration on this little depot is just perfect. It's it's excellent. I mean, what they've done with it is practically perfect. I hope they get the hotel looking even half as good as this. I'll bet you they do. They probably will, and then I hope they have it open to the public, because yes. I want to come up here and stay in the hotel. Yeah. Of course, the star of this whole thing is the roundhouse. Oh, isn't that amazing? Look at the work on that. Oh, they've just been doing such a great oh, job, man. and they've got a lot, lot to do. Yes, they do, but look how nice it looks already. It already is just turning out great, but we are going to have to come back here. Absolutely. More than once. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, just keep track of this place, because this is just turning out fabulous. Oh my, the rock work, look at that. It's gorgeous. Now here we see all that remains of the water tank. Uh, unfortunately, it met with a disaster some years back and was never rebuilt. But these guys are planning to rebuild it and use it. Mixed in and among all of the rusty bits and pieces, there's some really incredible railroad artifacts here. A really neat reminder of the incredible history of this location back in the day. Well, that's Como. Wow, that's like out oh, in the middle of nowhere. It is out there. Well, it's up in the middle of nowhere. Oh, that's true. I was gasping for air the whole time. I mean, talk about being up in the mountains. Those lucky people. That's a neat place. What an incredible place. And and uh, the Denver South Park and Pacific was, and, and now still is, just an amazing railroad. It is. That's neat. Just really neat. Uh, it's so cool. Oh, a stone roundhouse. And, oh. Thank goodness they preserved those. You know? Well, and I've heard a lot about Como, but mm -hmm. this was the first time to actually go up there and, yeah, to and to see that these guys are rebuilding it and recreating it. And they've got a steam engine, hello. It's they just do. wow. Uh -huh. Just wow. Uh -huh. So that's, that's really incredible. Mm -hmm. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, do pop on over to the channel. And if you haven't subscribed, you want to subscribe Absolutely. because subscription just means you'll be notified every time we upload a movie, which That's is true. all the time exactly. these days. Yeah, we're busy. So the easy way to go to the channel and to subscribe is to click on the blue button. Zoink, you see it right here, blue button. If you don't see it, not all devices support it. Ah. And it's going away on more and more devices all the time. Anyway, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here in a few days with another bit of screwing around. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. <laughs>